The Patriotic Alliance, or PA, says it has briefed its legal team to prepare a letter of demand to the ANC to remove the notice of termination of the coalition between the two parties in the Johannesburg city metro. The PA says the ANC's unilateral decision to sever ties is a breach of contract and will be interdicted. On Monday, the ANC informed the PA it was terminating the coalition agreement between them. Now, this follows a precautionary suspension of three senior ANC members in the city accused of COVID-19 related corruption. The ANC has alleged a purge of its comrades by the PA. Eugene Buerta, advisor to Patriotic Alliance President Gaten McKenzie, joins us now to discuss this. Good to have you. Thanks very, very much for being our guest here on the program. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning to your viewers as well. Right. So three people accused of corruption have been placed on precautionary suspension and the ANC has basically severed ties with the Patriotic Alliance for refusing to reinstate them. Explain what is going on. What actually happened? Uh, yeah, good. Thanks. So um, within the Joburg Property Company, which is an entity underneath the Department of Economic Development, um, the CFO, the acting CFO and acting CEO discovered some irregularities in terms of the COVID-19 spending, which indicated serious breaches of the supply chain. Um, and we're talking seriously bad stuff. Um, people like marketing companies, construction companies, etc., were getting cleaning contracts with no record or no history of cleaning. Despite the fact that JPC has hundreds, if not thousands, of um, cleaning staff, um, that they also have a panel of cleaning companies on their, on their list. They didn't use any of those companies. These individuals were involved in appointing companies that have no experience in cleaning. Um, and also, from the previous event where the, where the previous CEO and CFO were implicated um, in, in awarding contracts to four companies that um, not only didn't have any experience, but were charging, in some instances, 400 rand a square meter to clean when the going market rate at that point in time was 8 rand a square meter. So there were some gross breaches, and the executive of the JPC dealt with that. Um, the board of the JPC dealt with that, and they placed these various individuals implicated on precautionary suspension. Now, it's important to note that precautionary suspension is just a suspension on full pay that allows the company to do an investigation. So there's an investigation going on at the moment, and the board reported this up to the MMC's office, and the MMC approved because the PA will not tolerate any corruption. Mm -hmm. um, what happened then, this, this, this happened a few weeks ago, what happened then is the ANC um, called a bilateral meeting, and that's the process that we have within the coalition. They called a bilateral meeting, and they stated that there were some governance breaches that they were concerned about, that they wanted to talk to us about. Um, and the PA leadership met with the ANC. This was around the 23rd of October. And uh, in that meeting, uh, the regional SC, the, the, the ANC's regional secretary, opened the meeting. And he said, um, in, in his opening, he said, the national committee, the provincial committee, and the regional committee have all met and agreed that these three individuals must be reinstated. And we were shocked. We, 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 we sat back and we thought, well, we don't understand this, where this comes from. And uh, we understood that this was the corruption allegation, or not a corruption, sorry, the governance breach that they were talking about. So we responded, and our party president, Mr. McKenzie, responded and said, look, we had nothing to do with that. There's no purge of ANC members. What happened is within the JPC, the executives discovered some irregularities and they dealt with it. And we um, received the report and we approved their conduct because mm. we will not, as the PA, allow any corruption. Okay. So and um, it, bear, it, it bears noting that the reason we actually insisted on having a department that, that we control is so that there's no... Um, corruption within the coalition and the PA is implicated. Within our department, we can say we're running a clean operation and it's separate from those other operations. Yeah, okay, so, so let, me just, um, let me just interrupt you there very quickly. Where, where does sure. the, the, the Patriotic Alliance stand or feature in the disciplinary action and, and the purging of these individuals, these, these three that you're alluding to? Well, yeah, that's quite an interesting thing because the, the implication of this is that the PA have a role to play. Um, it does not. Um, in, in essence, the Patriotic Alliance appoints um, its MMC, which is uh, Lloyd Phillips, 
Um, the boards are appointed under the under the MMC, and the executives are in the business that are running the business, and um, they act based on what they see. We we don't have any role to play. The PA the PA is currently campaigning heavily in Rivoli. Um, none of us have a, a, a role, so to speak, in the JPC. Um, these are decisions that are taken by the executive. There's, okay. uh, we, we, we fail to understand how this is even possible. And this was what we said to the ANC. We said, you're asking us something impossible. It's against the law. We, we're not allowed to, as politicians, influence the, the officials. We, we cannot go and um, bring them back. We can't instruct anyone to bring them back. We don't okay. have the authority. So I want to ask you, the Patriotic Alliance basically demanding to be reinstated and has accused the ANC of a breach of contract. So... Bring us into the terms of this coalition contract. What exactly does it say? Uh, sure, that's quite a long discussion. <laughs> well, it, it is. Um, if you could summarize it for us, we don't have time. So, yeah. But basically, yeah. in this contract, what the ANC are doing, is it allowed or is it not allowed? Is it signed in this contract? They cannot do that. Yeah, so, so look, there is a, there's a clear contract between all the coalition partners and there's a dispute resolution process. And... What we imagined when the ANC raised this dispute is that we would go, the next level is to go to the PMC, the Political Management Committee, and at that PMC, we would have all the coalition partners in, and they would raise their case, and we would raise our defense, and then the PMC is the final arbiter of these things. None of that happened. We went to a second bilateral meeting. The ANC stood up, or, or we were in a Teams meeting, but they literally turned around and said, uh, the dispute cannot be resolved and we, we have by terminating this, this coalition agreement. And we were gobsmacked. And, and I, I, I recall the president turning around and saying, you cannot do this. We, we have a coalition agreement and you must live to the coalition agreement. And if you insist on doing this, we will go to court. Okay. So, you know, there has been talk and, and quite a lot of talk that the, the Patriotic Alliance has one seat. We know this. That is, is one seat and that's where the, the coalition comes in. And there's been talk that, the, that Gayton McKenzie, the, the leader, as you say, has, has captured the city's economic development portfolio. We know that the DA has written to Mayor Makubo demanding to know who's actually running the city between the Patriotic Alliance and the ANC. Because it looks like they uh, there's of the same understanding that the PA is actually acting like it's in charge. What is going on? Yeah, that's, an, that's also an interesting one. Um, look, we, we need to look at where it comes from and why the DA are raising these things. Um, from our point of view, the PA is a political party. So this concept of capture doesn't make sense. Um, in essence, when the DA was in charge, they appointed their MMCs, they appointed their, the EFF's MMCs, they appointed their executives. That's a normal process. And, and now they're complaining about that because all the PA have done is appointed MMC Lloyd Phillips and the executives in his office. Um, there's, there's no capture. There, there've been um, appointments and 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 removals of CEOs, etc. That um, that have followed gov proper governance processes. And we've we've requested reports. You know, when the DA um, say these things, we understand the media always sit to attention. We've requested reports from group governance, uh, which incidentally is controlled um, independently. And group governance are completely satisfied that, that we, we have had no influence, there's no undue influence, that everybody who's been appointed within our department have been correctly appointed. Um, we have um, CEOs that have been appointed following a proper process. So it's a, it's a bizarre allegation, and, and we, we've also requested um, some sort of proof. We, we want to understand what it is. What I can tell you is um, the president isn't involved in Joburg. Um, he's a national president. He's a national leader. Um, he doesn't have a seat. He doesn't have um, he doesn't have any executive powers. He doesn't work at the JPC. Um, the, to imagine him walking into JPC and giving anybody instructions is bizarre. He's he's been running a national campaign for the elections, um, and he's been busy with with those things. So, so, so you say so you're denying any anything that the fact that they're saying that he. It has captured the city's economic development portfolio. You deny that. That is not true. Yeah, yeah it, 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 exactly. We deny it. It doesn't make any sense. So, final question to you. Looking at how things are going now, I mean, there are by-elections next week. There's the local mm. uh, by-elections uh, to, to, towards the, the local government elections as well. What is going to happen? Where does this leave the relationship now? 
Well, um, obviously, when, when somebody breaches a contract, they, they will be subject to the law. Um, nobody's above the law, the ANC included. Um, we will be taking them to court. We, we cannot um, allow this. We entered into this coalition on the understanding that it would be from December 2019 until the, the next elections. Um, and we feel that parties must be held to their agreements. It, it, you can't bind people into a deal to get power and then discard them months later. We have a clear agreement and, and we, we will adhere to it. If there's a proper breach, then we will deal with that. But um, we deny any breach and, and we're happy to go to court and, and, and have it aired there. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's where we are. We, we're confident that the agreement will be upheld and that we'll um, continue with the coalition and, and the ANC will, will be taught a lesson out of this process. Right. Let's leave it there. Thanks for giving us your side of the story here. That was Eugene Buerta. He's the advisor much. to the Patriotic Alliance president explaining the fallout from their side between the ANC and the PA, which led to the removal of the latter from their City of Joburg coalition. So we'll see what happens and unfolds in the courts and, of course, get the ANC side on the story as well. Let's take a break. We'll see you at 7 with the news.